Does Ezekiel Elliott make sense for the Denver Broncos? What's up, guys? Welcome to Denver Broncos Syndicate, part of the Sports Syndicate family of channels where we are dedicated to bringing you content about our favorite sports teams. I am your host, Gage Madrid. Before we jump in, guys, if you could just do me a big favor and smash the like button on this video as well as sub to the channel, I would really appreciate it. As I always say, guys, those are two free and easy ways that you can help show your support. It helps tell YouTube's algorithm to push us out to fellow members of Broncos country just like you and me. Although the Denver Broncos did sign veteran running back Samaj P. Ryan, and I do expect them to add to the backfield in the draft, I also feel like the Denver Broncos could potentially look to add another name in free agency to the running back unit. With Javante Williams coming off multiple ligament tears in his knee, it is unknown what, if any, production we will get out of him in the 2023 season. Currently, the Broncos' running back room consists of Williams, P. Ryan, Tyler Beatty, and Demarie Crockett. One move that could make sense for the Broncos is to re-sign their leading rusher from last season, Latavius Murray, but there is a bigger name out there on the running back market that is at least getting some buzz here in the Mile High City, and that is Ezekiel Elliott. The former league-leading rusher was recently released after seven seasons with the Dallas Cowboys. During that time, he accrued 4,000-yard seasons and has rushed for at least 875 yards in each season of his career. But over the past couple of years, it had become evident that Zeke had lost a spring in his step, and he had since been supplanted in Dallas by Tony Pollard as the RB1. The Cowboys elected to place the franchise tag on Pollard despite him breaking his ankle in their playoff loss to the San Francisco 49ers. That's a big bone of confidence that he will return to form, and it's pretty clear that Ezekiel Elliott's days in Dallas were numbered. Despite him taking a significant step backwards in his production, he was still an efficient red zone back for the Dallas Cowboys last year. He found the end zone 12 times in 2022 and 24 times over the past two seasons. He's also still good in pass protection, and he can catch passes out of the backfield. He could potentially make sense to split time with Samaj P. Ryan as a third down back for the Broncos. As I alluded to earlier, I do feel like the Denver Broncos are going to look to add another running back in the draft, as I feel like they're definitely going to want to have some more speed at that position. That said though, I could definitely see the Broncos carving out a role for Ezekiel Elliott in Denver, and he could make sense again as a third down back and in the red zone. Some GMs out there are projecting that Ezekiel Elliott could sign for as little as the veteran minimum. Although I feel like he's worth a little bit more than that, I don't see Zeke signing for more than 2 or $3 million for next season. He is a far cry from the running back that led the NFL in rushing back in 2016. He's got a lot of tread on his tires as well. He was a bell cow running back while he was at Ohio State, and over the course of his NFL career, he accrued 8,200 rushing yards in seven seasons, and that's not accounting for his production in the pass game. Although I feel like Ezekiel Elliott could be a good role player here in Denver, his days as the bona fide RB1 are certainly done. The Broncos were sitting at about $11 million in cap space before they chose to re-sign Isain Bassey. At last check, the financial terms of that deal have not been disclosed, but I can't imagine that it's going to be more than $1 or $2 million a year for Bassey. Although most of that money needs to go to rookie salaries, I feel like they could still potentially squeeze in $2 or $3 million for Ezekiel Elliott especially if they restructured some deals such as the Russell Wilson contract or potentially Justin Simmons contract. Another way that they could potentially create some cap space is by moving on from Cortland Sutton in a trade, but since Brandon Cooks only fetched a fifth and a sixth round pick getting traded to the Dallas Cowboys earlier today, I really don't feel like the Denver Broncos are going to trade away Cortland Sutton, as he would get probably similar return, and I feel like at that rate the Broncos would be much better off just keeping him. So I'm curious, Broncos country, do you feel like Ezekiel Elliott would be a good option for the Denver Broncos? Drop those comments down below. I would love to hear from you. Be sure to leave a like on this video as well as subscribe and ring the bell so these videos appear in your notification feed. And while you're at it, guys, be sure to follow me on Twitter at GageMadridNFL for continuing Broncos coverage. And for now, guys, this has been another episode of Denver Broncos Syndicate. I am your host, Gage Madrid, saying peace out.